everybody, welcome to Channel Awesome's Orbit Report, your source for everything happening around the world in pop culture and entertainment news. I'm Heather Roos. And I'm Ayanna Wayne. And this is your news for Monday, September 18th. First up, we wanted to talk about Westworld Season 2 news. Now, at the New York City Comic Con, we saw a release of the Funko Pop of a new samurai character named Musashi. Now, it's been confirmed that the casting for that character in Season 2 will be none other than Hiroyuki Sonata. And so we don't have really any information on the character other than it is a full-fledged character in the show now. In the last season, we were revealed that Samurai World exists. I'm not going to give any more show spoilers for you, <laughs> but we don't know if he's going to be a guest or a robot. We have no other information than that. We can only speculate. We can also speculate, will there be a Roman world? Will there be a medieval world such as the original? We already know there's two worlds now, so it's possible. Why not? But these worlds seem huge, so we'll see how that works. <laughs> Also happening at HBO, Game of Thrones is apparently going to be filming multiple endings. Because of the hackings that happened, they feel like this is just the best way to keep the ending as secret as possible because we can't have nice things. Way to go, guys. Thanks, Internet. <laughs> <laughs> if anything, though, I feel like this might entice some hackers to hmm. maybe do, be more likely to do this because there's multiple endings to be leaked and then we can speculate what's going to be happening, what's real. We'll just have to wait and see. The real ending will be filmed live. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> live Dragons. <laughs> also on streaming services coming out to watch soon on Amazon Prime is the season simply named Lore. Yes! We both love the podcast so much. We're very excited that it's going to get its own season. Now, it's only going to have six episodes, but it looks like it's going to be chock full of good spooky scariness. Yeah, I'm really excited about it. It's dropping on Amazon, like you said, on Friday, October 13th. So it's dropping on Friday the 13th, Ooh. which I think is some super fun marketing. So it's a great idea. So spoopy. <laughs> and two of my favorite episodes are Black Stockings and Echoes. And I saw a woman being burned and I did see some lobotomy action. So it mm -hmm. looks like both of my favorite episodes are going to be within the six episode series. So I'm very, very excited about that. If you haven't gotten a chance, definitely listen to it. Yeah, you should definitely check out the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> also coming out and streaming is a new Blade Runner short. So uh, Blade Runner did as commissioned three shorts mm -hmm. to connect the original to the new movie, and already one of those has come out. But now the second one is announced as an anime, um, which will be super interesting because it's being directed by Sinichiro Watanabe, who is the director of Cowboy Bebop. Oh, yeah. So if you were a huge fan of Cowboy Bebop, uh, which you should be, <laughs> then I feel like this anime is going to be fantastic. Fantastic. We already know that this director is strongly influenced by Blade Runner, so he's stoked to be a part of the project. I'm stoked to see this project, <laughs> um, and it'll come out on September 26th. <laughs> Speaking of sci-fi things, <gasps> there was a lot that happened with Star Wars That's this right. <laughs> week. Um, the first thing that we saw was, I called it, J.J. Abrams is officially the director for Star Wars Episode Nine which seems like an odd choice to me. You know, mm -hmm. we have the new trilogy, he directed the first one, someone else is gonna direct, uh, directed the second one, and now he's gonna come back for the third one? So, I mean, I think they're be playing safe. it safe. Yeah, you know, it'll be yeah. fine, but it just seems like an odd choice to mm. me. And then they also kind of low-key <laughs> bumped in there that now the release date is December 20th, 2019, mm -hmm. which is a some couple of months behind what the initial release date was. Right. Which makes sense. New director, yep. gotta have more time, adjust the schedule. But BT dubs, it's not coming out when you expected. Right, but it'll be the holiday Classic season. Classic Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> also in Star Wars news, there's going to be a new audiobook being released simply named From a Certain Point of View. Now, it's going to be 40 short stories for the 40th anniversary mm -hmm. and each of those 40 stories is going to be from a certain character's point of view. Haha, -ha, see? <laughs> <laughs> and at first we thought maybe it would be like some niche stories, yeah. niche stories that like weren't major characters, right. but now we're seeing it is some major characters that yeah. are going to be a part of these short stories. We got so, a quote from Obi-Wan even, mm -hmm. uh, titled Time of Death is going to be his short story, so it's going to be like his life after his death. So that'll be interesting. Yeah. Force ghostness, I guess. <laughs> um, and they had some huge 
huge casting news that came with this as they released the list of all 40 actors who are going to be a part of this. And the big one that we're focusing on is that John Hamm is going to be Boba Fett. Awesome. Yeah, that'll be super cool. Really interesting to hear. Um, we also saw that Neil Patrick Harris is going to be a part of this, as well as Will Wheaton. And Ashley Eckstein, who is not only a Sogatano, but also has her own line of clothing no named her universe yes. and it's super nerdy Love and it. is most of my closet is comprised of her universe clothing so it's, it's great <laughs> but it'd be interesting to see if she comes back to voice a familiar character or if she's voicing someone new yeah i mean i don't know I, it feels like as long as she's already the character you might as well <laughs> but she's, be it, she's but a voiceover actress that's she's true got she could do tricks some up her ranges and exactly. yeah we'll just have to see and that drops on october 3rd so be ready for it <laughs> in other movie news there is some pre-production photo from hellboy released mm. of david harbour and i lost it Amazing. and it looks so good, so amazing. I was not on board th with this at first. You know, I was a little hesitant, a different different director, you know, no Guillermo del Toro, right. no Ron Perlman. Right. I was a little iffy about it, mm -hmm. but then I saw this photo and I'm on board. I am with it. He looks great. That and prosthetic I work, yes. oh, so good. His body looks amazing. Perfect. It looks hands, amazing. New hands. Yeah, yeah. It looks more metal mm -hmm. than um, rock. So I just, it looks more accurate to the comic book, which wasn't that far off to begin mm -hmm. with, but it, it just looks awesome. I'm, I'm, on, I'm on board. I'm there. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> so exciting. We can't wait for more information about the film, but in the meantime, we have a picture to look at. Yes. <laughs> now, uh, what I'm very excited for in movie news, we had a trailer drop this week a new one for the disaster artist and my hype for this film is so <laughs> real you guys so real it's so real now this trailer was a bit different from the previous one we saw the previous mm -hmm. one seemed to err on the side of humor it was a very funny take of a specific scene and the shooting of that scene mm -hmm. and it seemed very funny but it seemed very much like we were laughing at Tommy Wiseau as right. a person Making a little bit which I mean and... if you've seen the room you've all laughed at Tommy Wiseau as a person right. get off your high horse <laughs> But in this new trailer, it seemed like we really got that heartfelt backstory like is described in the book of the disaster artist that the movie is going to be based off of. Right. And man, my, my, my feels. Yeah. Tommy. Right. I, oh no. <laughs> I felt things. It'll be a really interesting look at him like yeah. as a per as a person, like making him more human almost. Because mm -hmm. it's easy to like see the stuff that happened with the room and whatever and feel like he's just some figure. But it'll... And he, he, he's sort of cultivated that man of mystery vibe mm -hmm. as well. Partially on purpose, partly by accident, including a billboard that was up for a while. That infamous billboard that just was Tommy Wiseau's face and a number that you mm -hmm. could call. Now they've actually brought a new billboard with James Franco as Tommy Wiseau's face and that number, and mm. it still works, apparently. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah, I haven't called it, so yeah. you guys can call, let me know. I don't right. call random numbers. Let us know if you called it <laughs> and what happened. Yeah, but let supposedly it gives you information on the film, and the original one took you to his site that he slapdashed together and mm -hmm. stuff because he wasn't actually a real producer, but did his own producing. Man, you guys, there's so much mystique around the old film of The Room and I buy into it. It was very yeah. interesting to me. We still don't know how he just made like so much money. Why did he film it with film and digital? And also he bought his cameras. Yeah. That's gonna be a scene in the movie. And I'm sure. I, oh my goodness. I'm so hyped for this movie. Also, I think, I, I believe they pushed it back towards the end of the year for some Oscar-worthy buzz. And you guys, oh how my gosh. full circle would that be? <laughs> oh man, I honestly, I hope it's a good film, but if it's a good film, man, get that Oscar. And I know, Tommy right? would have to be <laughs> up on that stage. Are you kidding me? Oh, Just, it's almost incomprehensible I, how perfect that would be. Full circle. Man, <laughs> my hype is real for this film, so anything else we get, I'll be very excited and eat it up. But otherwise, I just cannot wait to see this film when it's released. Yes. <laughs> also this week, we got some production photos from the stage of Frozen. Oh. Now, we 
we're having the pre-release photos right. because it's only on the the pre-premiere, pre-Broadway premiere, and that was in Denver this past weekend. So there might be some changes when it goes to full Broadway in 2018, mm -hmm. but for the meantime, they're they're going through their paces, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't work. So I'm very excited to see like what kind of songs are added, if it's any yeah. of the original songs that made, didn't make it into the film, mm -hmm. um, stuff like that. So I'm yeah. very excited to hear more about that production, but that's some Broadway news for you. <laughs> what, you like Broadway? Yeah. Yeah. What? Now, it won't go on tour clearly until after spring mm -hmm. of 2018. We got right. a while while it's on Broadway, and let's be honest, Lion King was on Broadway for a while, so it was Aladdin, and honestly, as Frozen is such the cash cow that it is, it makes sense that it's going to be on Broadway, but we'll have to wait to see it on tour. Yeah. That's going to be it from us here, guys. Heather, where can people find you on social media? Um, you can find me on Twitter at Heather Roos, Instagram at HRoos, or Twitch, twitch.tv slash Heather Roos. And then, as usual, I'm on Facebook as Ayana Wade, everywhere else as Awesome Ayana. Keeping it simple for you. Now, that's going to be it, so we'll have to catch you next week. And in the meantime, beam us up! Yeah.